the slave master would always like to be entertained. And they always knew that, that coming from West Africa, these slaves were very, um, very artistic. They could sing, they could play things. Of course, they drew the line when it came to the drum because they thought this was talking to one another. We don't want that. We don't want you to have a religion, your drum, you know, that's a, your names, your family. But you could entertain us, you could sing for us. Being that they could not play drums, the Africans living here in the Danish West Indies at the time, drumming was outlawed because that was a form of communication. So they would make up a song. Say something happened on the plantation today. Say the master, master John was riding a horse and a horse threw him over and he landed on prickle pear cactus or sucker cactus. And these sucker cactus, they penetrate your skin. Okay, so you know Master John was in a lot of pain today, so what they will do is they make up a calypso, a song, and then I'll sing the song to you. Okay. So you're going to take the song with you, and so it's a form of communication. Spread it like a newspaper. Congo Barra and Gorgia were Calypsonians of the first ever in Trinidad, but they weren't called Calypsonians, they were called Chantwells. Those days that the French planters, the French masters lived in this country and brought to Trinidad the rhythmic and most enticing form of French culture in the masquerade. The Chantwell was born and they would be singing in Patwell or they would be singing in, in, in a, a sort of a language that, that incorporated some of the African um, dialects with some of the French dialects and totally confused the slave master. They didn't know what they were singing about. You know, and this developed into the, the Calypso. Gosia was a huge, thick, black, strong slave who was humorous and sang lots of ditties mimicking the French masters. They didn't get annoyed. In fact, they were amused and asked him to sing about other French masters. So pre-carnival festivities were done and they were inviting Gosia to sing about their neighbors and their habits. And so Calypso began in double Anton, making suggestive remarks about the people and the masters, and at the same time saying it in French patois and later in English and patois. It's the fighting contests that went on throughout the 19th century into the 20th century. But the stick fight was accompanied by drumming, chanting, call and response, litanic type songs. And these songs have formed the basis of the calypso, the, particularly the, the, the road march type calypso, where you still have that call and response structure. You must understand that this art form came way, way back and changed and changed and people added to it and the various persons made their contributions, four lines, eight lines, until we have verse and chorus, different types of calypso, commentary, smut, etc., etc., all types of calypso. And it is this that has made it a great art form. Calypso History Month is indeed an opportune time to reflect on an art form that has helped to tell the tales of Trinidad and Tobago's rich history. Vice Chairman of Tuco, Shirlene Hendrickson, says a lot of Trinidad and Tobago's history remains unknown, so children in schools do not have a great sense and appreciation of Calypso. Their topics would be topics that could be taken up in editorials, you know, they, they would sing things that, um, that, 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 that people were reporting about in the rest of the world during the Second World War. You had um, Lord Executor singing about the, the arrival of the Graf Zeppelin. If the younger people don't know where they're coming, they would know where they're going. Don't dump the past, because if they dump the past, they will not have a future. I will say this bold. To have a future, you must always prepare that you are getting older and you will, you will have, you should have a brighter future, sorry. You should have a brighter future every day in your life. Only if you respect your past. Your past is important. Music of the past is important. It was an awesome sight. Near one million people walked free one night. Caribbean plantations glowed with flambeau light. For Cambole, 
Every song that they make in America is about love, but we sing from politics to sport to science to whatever, education, it is recorded in Calypso. In 1955, Mexico, this vintage newsreel shows the aftermath of the strongest hurricane of the year. Days before, Hurricane Janet caused nearly 200 deaths in Barbados and the Grenadines. Janet was captured by film, but more importantly, for us in Calypso. A man jump out his shoes, Janet hide in the mountain. Janet licked down a million buildings. Janet's sister was Katie. Janet blow away the whole of Miami. The first gospel calypso I wrote, I gave it to all the radio stations in Trinidad to play. And they say, sorry, we cannot play that. Because you cannot put the word of God with the Calypso beat. Because Calypso, it originate out of Africa. And in those days, anything comes out of Africa is evil. And I have instead of brains in my head, a small sensitive computer with complete data. Yes, I'm equipped with laser, telescopic eyes and radar. That's why I feel that I am real. When Mr. Kid Breaker get hot, I could whine better than John Travolta. I'm a robot, whining with precision. See me, I'm a robot. The Calypsonian got his rightful place first by being the Chantwell in the carnival band. Every band had a chantwell, and every singer had a topic. If they were playing a sailor band, they would call, talk, sing about the sailor band. And so that was competition between the bands like there is today, which band was first. And so this was the opportunity for the Calypsonian to display his talent by being a chantwell of very high caliber. It was always something to, to listen to, you know to tell the Calypsonian in the same way that the Calypsonian told a story, the masquerader told a story, you know. Only distance will separate us. Ah, what a day, what a time, what a story. To behold this world and its glory. Everybody cosmopolitan, we all will unite as well. And then we got peace in the world. Where we need peace in the world. No more greed, tell world leaders for me. A Calypsonian is a poor man newspaper. A Calypsonian is the person to tell the, the, peop, the people's spokesman, so to speak. He is to let the people know what time is it, what's going on behind their back. So it has been growing and also impacting on the educational status of the children because now they come prepared with topics in a bag ready to perform and current topics you know so and then they look forward that's why we also ensure that our extempo artists as extraordinary as they are that they keep current too with the children so you know they don't 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 underestimate the children you know that it's true but what can i do but try and explain the facts to you i say a caliph's okay must be able to compose and sing. Then you could hold up your head as a man and call yourself a true, true Calypsonian. Those who possess the Calypsonian art are men of remarkable gifts. And there's a, specially, there's a speciality to it that I'm not privileged to embrace. The fact that I've been called King of Calypso was not my manufacturing deal with those who market and sell you goods that you buy every day. When I was a little fellow, okay. and this ain't no fabrication from about five, six years, I found myself okay. composing up the bad dress I was going to school, and we would play Newtown Boys or Grovian. If you win the match, Instantly, I would start to, to sing some here. 
Yeah, but see, more Western League don't grow we were for, and the old school will be behind me. And in them days I talking about it. Singing Calypso was. I know what, what crime to throw me. A big crime, not a small one. The Belafonte was the only man that the people accept as a Calypsonian. Although we know that Belafonte is not the authentic Calypsonian, but to the people outside, he was. And he helped Calypso in a big way. The outer world understand Belafonte much better that they understand us. The young brigade in those days, we don't have that anymore, but the young brigade referred to the younger artists, and the old brigade were the senior Calypsonians. Fortunately for me, Small Island Pride, where I used to live, was one of the seniors, and he sang at the old brigade. So when he took me to the tents, I went to the old brigade. There, it was an eight-week season I could remember in 1957. When this King of Calypso stuff came out, the Trinidadians went crazy. Boy, they went nuts. You call yourself the King of Calypso, and you never come here, and you never go up into competition, you never do jump up, you never go in the tent, you never do nothing, and you teeth the music, and you call yourself king. How can you do that? And I said, you're absolutely right. I've never been in the tent. I never competed, because I never thought I could. I never wanted to. I'm not coming here and sing a verse, because in that tempo, you're not allowed to rehearse. You have to show up and blast the talent you got by singing your lines right here on this part. Bada! When you sing extemporary, you don't have to rehearse. You come inside and you sing a verse. Lovely. That is what I want people to know. We are the giants of Calypso. 1929 at 12 years old. All you do are the subtract to us. Boy, and I'm singing. I'm living fine, this 1929, no woman at all to disturb me mind. I'm living fine, this 1929, no woman at all to disturb me mind. After they leave the stage, they would get together and go and eat together and go to, to cinema together and so on. But for entertainment purposes, they would get on stage and, and rip each other to ribbons. Today it is vastly different in that I can, I'm sorry I have to say it, but it's the truth. There are Calypsonians who would look on other Calypsonians and actually hate them because they're singing a good song. The first tent I sang in was the the Dirty Jim Swizzle Club, I think it was um, Young Brigade. My singing style is what brought my name. Because in those days, the Calypsonians were all flat-footed and singing uh, the, 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 the messages, basically the same kind of rhythm. You like how Bomber sings, la ba ba la ba ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da This is basically how it was. Unfortunately for them, fortunately for me, one night while about five of them were coming back, the car shut down. So the tent got short of singers. And the MC, who was Sagalba, did his hand this. Say, boy, you could sing? I say, yes, sir, I just try. He said, boy, I put in your own here, and if you ain't come good, don't come back. I got four anchors. 1982, a special year. You got into politics and you decided to compose a tune, we like it so. And uh, we had some controversy that year. Yeah, always controversy, you know. <laughs> we like it so. We free. Eh? You, Mr. Sparrow, let me tell you, we want to 
Uh, what? I, some, I can't remember. You know, so long I ain't seen this song, I can't remember. <laughs> but I remember when you did that tune in the tent on the opening night. It was almost like a still audience saying, you know, this man bold face says, come and sing a calypso like that. But by the end of the season, everybody was singing the chorus with you. That's right. Um, because they recognize that there's a lot of truth in it. An elder from San Pueblo has said, please be sure to tell your people that the purpose of our ceremonies is not entertainment, but attainment. They are more sacred than that. They are the very essence of our lives. Culture is a storyline talking about the facts of life. A feeling that comes from within because it was introduced through the slaves rebelling about their slave masters in song that's where it started Calypso was and still is um, in all its incarnations now an integral part of carnival you know the, the, the Calypso again was born out of the, the slavery, the period of slavery, when you had what was referred to as Shantwells, you know, people who would sing um, their protests rather than stand up in a soapbox. They realized, the French masters, that Gaujian, who were making demands in the interest of a better treatment for the slaves, and he was put in jail in the royal jail that is now 103 Frederick Street. All the prisoners of the jail light a, f a light and say, Prisonier levé, mete lime by Congo Barra. And if you want to hear the song, Prisonier levé, mete lime by Congo Barra, mete lime by Congo Barra, judge and jury go charge him for murder. Prisonier levé. Mete Lime by Congo Barra, and that was the voice of not only the prisoners, but the Africans who inhabited the lands when they were asking for mercy. But Congo Barra was not afraid. He defended the slaves and he died for them right here in the royal jail. Jamaica's independence was extremely important to me. In New York City, my mother was a very strong Garveyite. She loved Marcus Garvey, went to rallies in which Marcus Garvey spoke. When I came to Jamaica in that youthful period of my life, uh, Buster Manti was very busy giving the British a difficult uh, time uh, in, the, in, in their rule of the island. So I was always around uh, an environment that rebelled against its suppression. And that alone gave me linkage. I sang a song 25 years ago called, Is Only We Could Build Back This Country or sweet country TNT. It's only we could build back this nation if everyone make a positive contribution, a productive contribution. So we must get closer to our culture because why? Culture is the rhythm of a nation. Wanted Dead or Alive was observation again. Um, Pak Chong Hee and um, um, Idi Amin and Gary and people from all over the world at the same time seem to have had a problem. Uh, General Samosa from Nicaragua and you know it all happened at the same time so again a keen sense of observation and brought that one out. The rule of the tyrants declined the year 1979 from Uganda to Nicaragua bombs and bullets all the time A lot of comments they used to have on Belafonte here is that he thieved the Calypso and um, he can't sing Calypso and he's spoiling the people Calypso, but they never thought that Belafonte doing Calypso would bring greater revenue to mm -hmm. the individual Calypso then. A lot of people s tend to say, well, he doesn't sing, really sing Calypso and so on, but I think Harry Belafonte has done more to put Calypso music into the consciousness of people. He eventually came to New York and he came to find me. And I fell in love with the guy and his style and his talk. And we must have done about six or seven songs thereafter. I wonder why nobody don't like me. Or is it a fact that I'm ugly? 
The Lerso is a story being told to educate and inform with a topic. My message is daily. People that want to know what time is it. I put it, I put the message in song. So there's where I build my popularity. People hire me all over the Caribbean, and I do believe I will start to travel all over the world because word is power. In the history of the record business, uh, the first LP to ever sell one million records within a year was the album entitled Calypso. And uh, the phenomena of that was so enormous that RCA, the company that I recorded for, gave me what was considered to be the first gold record in the history of the business and really set the, uh, the stages for what ultimately became the Grammy. And every time I look at these awards, I can say, well, that record that reflected the culture of that remarkable place called Jamaica was the forerunner of all of this, and I take, I take great pride in that. Today, as carnival has been spread all over the world, in Sweden and Finland and Denmark and Holland and these places, the Trinidad types of carnival. I left Trinidad in 1948, went to London and made my first record. And while I was a big hit in England, I used to sing at the Churchill, where Princess Margaret used to visit very often. Western them would uh, explain to their English friends what I was really saying. So eventually, the English people caught on my song. What I did do was to use the environment of Caribbean lore to put us on the map at another level that I thought was instructive and creative for us. And in that service, if I have offended you, then I beg your forgiveness. And I enjoy life in England. I love the cold then. I get accustomed to the cold. Lord Kitchener, now I'm told that you are really the king of Calypso singers. Is that right? Yes, that's well, so are you true. For us? Right now. Yes. London is the place for me. London. This lovely city. Music is very, very central to my existence, to my passion, to my, to my joy. I also find it as, a, as an instrument of great communication. I mean, when you see 50,000 people in Germany singing Dale, and you look at 25,000 Japanese singing Dale, it tells you something about the power of the song, especially the songs that come out of a buka. Yeah!